Let's start again. Um, Thura says no voice. Gotcha. Let's start again. All right. My name is Steve McPhail. I'm from OET Online. And I'm going to be talking today about reading and listening part B. We're streaming live on uh, Facebook and YouTube. In fact, it's our first time to stream on two channels. So um, great advance in technology. And we hope that it reaches more people and helps you achieve your desired OET score. Now, before I begin the actual live session, what I want to do is get everyone to type in um, their, lo their location, their profession, and planned exam date. So three things, where you are, what your profession is, and what your planned exam date is. As I said before, um, I'm Steve, I'm a teacher, uh, an English for medical purpose teacher, and I'm in Brisbane, Australia, where it's 5 p.m. All right, so everyone just put that information in. Now I'm just gonna bring up a new share. I'm gonna disappear, I'm gonna become smaller everyone and we're gonna focus more on what we're teaching today. Um, all right, let's look who's here. Hello to Chona, hello to Thuraya, AMD is there. Hello to Zul, hi Mai. And lots of people on Facebook, I can see quite a few people on YouTube as well, that's wonderful. Mai's a nurse in Melbourne, thank you. Hello to Roxy. Hello to Jersey. Lots of people coming in. Philippines, Delsa's gonna take the exam in March. Yep. And Amandeep is doing the exam tomorrow by the look of it. Good luck there tomorrow, Amandeep. And um, hello, Jailan, going for March, good. Roxy's got her exam tomorrow. All right, well, I hope you're feeling well prepared. All right. All right, excellent. Well, I think we're gonna get started. Um, Umut is over there in Istanbul. All right, going for February, that's tomorrow, good luck. And um, all right, wonderful. Well, glad everyone's joining us. So um, let's get started. Um, just a quick question. How do you feel about reading and listening part B? The um, interesting part of the exam for reading and listening. Um, they both only have six marks out of a total of 42. So they're not a, as large as the part A or part C in both components of the exam or both subtests. Um, but definitely a big part of the exam because every mark counts. So uh, even though there are only six questions in each, it's really good to practice these subtests or these, um, these skills so that you can perform well. All right, there's a few people I know. Hello to Katniss or Kate there. Hello to um, Shaista. Welcome to Sukrit. All right, I'm going to turn off my phone so I don't get um, a distraction there. All right, I think I'm ready to go. Um, hello to Sumi, some familiar faces. Eru says, having trouble with part C. Yeah, well, I've covered that in another prep hour. So if you look through the records, you might find that one, Eru. Um, Portia's had trouble, you failed twice. All right, hopefully this will give you some tips, Portia. And don't remember, we got some awesome courses available as well. Um, okay, all right. Well, we'll get started, everyone. Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? Just type in if you're ready. All right, here we go. So um, it's workplace communication. That's what part B is. It's workplace communication. So this exam, it's not just testing your ability to understand what your patient is saying or to communicate with your patient. 
it's not just about that. It's also testing your ability for workplace communication. How are you going to cope in the English speaking workplace? That's what part B of both reading and listening is designed to test. So it means I uh, create some very unique tasks in those areas. So let's have a look. Just a moment, a little bit of a tech glitch here while I get this working. Just one moment. I'll disappear one sec, guys. Stay on. All right, I'm back everyone. I just had to do a little bit of adjustment with my PowerPoint there. I think we're all good now. All right, let's do this. So, oh, there we go. So we're gonna start with part B everyone. So what are you gonna face on the exam day? Well, the texts that you read are interesting. They might be a policy document, um, some sort of health policy that a, a hospital or a clinic would have, a protocol or a way that you conduct your health care. Could be hospital guidelines, the way the hospital works internally regarding treatment of patients with various conditions. Uh, could be an extract from a manual telling you how to do something. Uh, and it also could be email some, or a memo, some internal communication perhaps from a manager to a department or so on. So different types of real text providing information. Not so much a detailed analysis or analytical text with different opinions like part C. Reading part C is very opinion based, whereas reading part B is more fact based. So you've got to identify various facts or, or the purpose of a particular text. Now, it's part of on reading day, it's a, it's a one hour test, you get 15 minutes for part A, and then you have um, 45 minutes all together for part B and part C. You should really be able to complete your part B six questions uh, in about 10 minutes, no more, because you're gonna need that remaining 35 minutes for your part C. So approximately, 90 seconds per question, All right? So you're gonna be busy, you're gonna be focused. Um, you can't really be distracted if you wish to complete those questions within that time frame. Now the length of each text is 100 to 150 words and there are multiple choice questions with three answer choices, right? So that's good because part C has four answer choices. So you're only getting three. Uh, Ranju says, please writing. Yeah, we'll be doing writing in the future. Probably the next session will be writing Ranju. So you hang in there. Okay, so um, what do you need? Um, what strategies or skills? Well, you've got to understand a gist. What is a gist? Well. That's really the essence or the main idea or even purpose, the reason why um, a text um, is presented or made available to somebody. What, what's the purpose of that text? And you'll also need to be able to understand particular detail at sentence level. And that's very useful when you're trying to rule in or rule out your answers, because some questions it may be easier to actually rule out a question, uh, rule out an answer choice rather than rule in the correct one. So there's two ways you can deduce 
your answer. One, you find the answer choice which matches the text, or if that's hard, you rule out the answer choices that don't match and select the remaining one. As a general strategy, we're going to talk about um, QAT for part B. Read the question, read the answer choices, and then read the text. We use a different strategy, QTA, more often for part C. Uh, so we read the questions, the question stem and the answer choices carefully. Uh, whenever you're doing any of these tests, you should always have a pen in your hand, everyone. You have a pen in your hand um, because you should be marking your paper as you go. Now, that's, I mentioned that in our last final exam tips uh, for those who attended. Um, you really want to underline key words to really narrow your focus. And it's, a, it's an underutilized skill. Not everybody does that. So uh, also, so underline your keywords. And then finally, try to predict a degree of prediction, engagement, using whatever you can, your common sense, your medical knowledge, any, anything you can to help you at least start thinking about what, we, what, be, what may be right or wrong before you read. Sometimes it's impossible to tell, but sometimes you'll have a suspicion that perhaps C is doesn't sound quite right to you, and perhaps B sounds better. It's just a sense. It may not be um, the final answer you choose, but it gets you thinking and engaging your mind. You must engage. All right, so we're going to do question, answer, text. That means answer choices. So let's have a look. Here's our first one, everyone, up on the screen. Now, we, if we look up here, we can see we have the guide. Here's our question. The guideline inform the guidelines inform us that personalized equipment for radiotherapy. Now let's I'll annotate this. The guidelines inform us that personalized equipment for radiotherapy is, is advisable for all patients, improves precision during radiation needs to be tested at the first consultation. Let's do this one together, everyone. And Jailan says, can I mark a word test paper? Absolutely, Jailan. Not only can you, you must to help you engage. They're not going to recycle it. So make sure you do underline those key words. Okay, let's read it, everyone. Guidelines, radiate, radiotherapy simulation planning. The initial appointment may be referred to as a simulation appointment. During this appointment, you will discuss your patient's medical history and treatment options and agree on a radiotherapy treatment plan. The first step usually is to undertake a CT. So read these, watch the linking. The first step is to undertake a CT scan of the area requiring treatment. Uh, the patient will meet the radiation oncologist their registrar and radiation therapist, so three people. A decision will be made regarding the best and most comfortable position for treatment. And this will be replicated daily, it means repeated, doesn't it? For the duration of the treatment. Depending on the area of the body to be tested, personalized equipment, or now here's a key word. Finally, we found personalized equipment. Uh, which relates to our question. So this must be important. Depending on the area of the body to be tested, personalized equipment such as a face mask may be used to stabilize the patient's position. This equipment helps keep the patient comfortable during the treatment and makes the treatment more accurate. Okay, so A, let's look at some choices here, everyone. Is it advisable to all patients? Yes or no, everyone for A, all patients. Some people already may have the answer. Is it advisable to all patients? It says, depending on the area of the body to be treated, 
personalized equipment such as a face mask may be used. Is it all patients? Or is it just patients um, that only require treatment in a certain area? Rule in or rule out everyone? I'm going to say, just a moment. A little bit of a glitch there. I'm still doing this. Just a sec. All right. So it's rule out. Thank you, Jemiah. Um, Because it depends on an area. So A is wrong. All right. We've got that. Let's continue. It's not C because it doesn't say it needs to be, that's not given, is it? The answer is B. And this is where we start to bring some synonyms in. Notice how it says improves precision during radiation. So it says this equipment, this equipment means the personalized equipment helps keep the patient comfortable and still during the treatment and makes the treatment more accurate. So one of your jobs when you're making, choosing particular answers it, is to be aware of synonyms and make sure they match. There's the answer, everyone. Not too bad. Most people seem to have got it. Well done. Meha says, can I ask her if it's okay to underline the keywords in the multiple choice ABC? Yes, you can. Does it affect your score? No, it doesn't. They're only look, they're not going to be looking at that. They're only going to be looking where you mark it on the answer sheet, Meha. So they're not interested in how you found the answer. They're not interested in your process. Perhaps like your high school teachers may have been. They're more interested in your answer. All right, let's do another one, everyone. Now this one, I'm going to give you a time session, everyone. So read this on the screen and I'll see if you, and we'll look at the questions quickly. The purpose of these instructions, so this is a purpose one. We've got a list of instructions. Is it how to monitor an ECG reading, how to monitor? Is it how to position electrodes correctly? Or is it how to handle an animal during an ECG procedure. All right, I'll let everyone read this on the screen, everyone. I'll give you one minute to read, and then we'll see if we can find the answer. Start now. You're being timed, everyone. And that's our time up. Some answers are coming three. B seems to be popular. All right. Um, well done. Well done. It is B. Um, it's not A, monitor an ECG reading. It's not talking about monitoring. Um, and it C is not correct because it does not discuss animal handling. So how do we get the idea? Well, this is an interesting question, everyone. This says the purpose of a text, right? So really, if we analyze this one, the purpose of the text is to explain how to. Um, and it is B, position electrodes correctly. 
Good electro connection is the most important factor in recording a high quality ECG. So the purpose is stated here in the introduction. And then this tells you how to do it. Shave the patch on each, um, how to shave a patch on each forelimb, clean the electrodes um, with an alcohol swab. This is telling you what to do. It goes on to say, um, it does tell us a bit, little bit about handling. It says pinch the skin and animal and place clips. And the, but it's not really about how to handle the animal. It does say the animal must be kept still, but that's not the purpose. And this is prior to the procedure as well. And it's basically checking everything. So this is the main idea. And down the bottom, um, uh, number seven, if there's no heart reading, you have a contact problem with one or more of the leads. So therefore you should recheck the leads and reapply the clips. So it's all about positioning it correctly. That's our purpose. Well done everyone for getting that one. Keo says, it's easy for me to comprehend reading good, but you're having a hard time in listening. Any tips coming up next, Keo? Coming up next. All right, let's do one more of these, everyone. Let's do one more of these. All right, now this one is oxytocin. Let's read it, everyone. We'll do this one together. This one's the extract informs us. The, it, this extract informs us that the amount of oxytocin given will depend on how the patient reacts. Oh, sorry, it informs us that A, the amount depends on how the patient reacts. B, the patient will go into labor as soon as oxytocin is administered. Or the extract informs us that staff should inspect the oxytocin pump, a job for the staff. All right, let's read it. Oxytocin dosage and admin. Parenteral drug products should be inspected visually for particulate matter and discoloration prior to administration. This actually relates to C. Can you see that? It's connected to C. Um, because it says prior to administration. But is that telling us the, the pump or the drug product? Looks like a different subject. The dosage, um, and then, then it says dosage of oxytocin is determined by the uterine response. The dosage information below is based on various regimens and indications in general use. Now, this says induction of stimulation of labor. Intravenous infusion is the only acceptable method of administration for the induction or simulation or stimulation of labor. Accurate control of the rate of infusion flow is essential. An infusion pump or other device and frequent monitoring of strengths of contractions and fetal heart rate are necessary for the safe administration of oxytocin in the induction of simulation of labor. If uterine contractions become too powerful, if the infusion can be stopped, abruptly stopped, and the oxytocin simulation of the uterine musculature will soon wane. So the contraction will stop because the stimulation will wane, it will go down. So we don't think it's C because that said inspect the pump. Um, B says the patient will go into labor. As, is B true, everyone? A lot of people are going for A. The patient will go into labor as soon as oxytocin is administered. Well, will they go into labor straight away? That's the question. Well, it says it can be stopped if you reduce it. So no, you're monitoring that. So it depends on the amount, doesn't it? So the amount of oxytocin given will depend. All right, looks like everyone got that. So see, these weren't too bad, these tasks, everyone.
people were able to deal with it. So it can be managed. That rules out B. Um, C just has a different subject. That's a common um, thing to be aware of. Answer D, it depends on the patient, how the patient reacts. Now, they don't, they just use the word patient reacts. What reactions? The uterine response, the strengths of contraction, and the fetal heart rate. These are the things um, that you need to monitor, and then that will determine the amount that you need to give. All right, so reading part B, um, if you're really focused and pay well, it can actually be quite an achievable section. I think you should be targeting five out of six or six out of six, because it's only going to get harder when you get to part B. All right, now these tasks we're doing today, I've selected them from the, you can't see it actually here. This is the OET Center book, everyone. This is coming from the OET Center practice test book. It's got some great tasks in it if you're looking for um, good practice material. That's the um, OET Center practice. Um, practice tests book. So that's where these ones are coming from today. Okay. Now, just a few other comments about reading, everyone. Um, if you are finding reading difficult, everyone's at a different point in time. Some people are just ready to go. Some people are building their skills. Make sure that you do read every day. Um, I definitely recommend um, reading medical topics. And if you haven't gone there yet, definitely try Medscape, everyone. Has everyone in the audience used Medscape? Anyone not use Medscape? Answer that question. Have you used Medscape before? It's a great one. building your skills and just keeping up to date with topics. Here it is everyone up on the screen. So you can see that one there. A lot of people have. Yep. And if you're reading it, there's lots of good ones. But um, go to the section where it says news and perspective, everyone. And then you can pick there's different areas, drugs and diseases, education, but news and perspective. Perspective often relates to opinion. So opinion-based articles are good. Here's a good popular article on artificial intelligence um, that's just released today. So that's a great one to be reading. Um, and if you're reading every single day, you're going to get faster. You're going to build your vocabulary. And it's just going to have a big impact on your overall score. All right, so that's something you should be reading all the time. Umat's endorsing it because he was reading as a med student. Now you're going to read it as an English language student, Umut. Um, but the good thing is if you keep up with topical events, then there's always a chance you'll get similar topics on exam day. So that regular reading, and um, you can set it up so you get messages on your phone. So every day you'll get a text coming into your phone telling you the latest topics. You can read it on the train. You can read it on the go. Um, just that daily reading habit, everyone. So make sure you're doing that. All right. So that's a, that's a good site. Did that come up on the screen, everyone, a second ago? That's the one. Yep. Okay. Now back to my slideshow, everyone. Um, you can also read old material. Doesn't even have to, old OET material is best, 1.0. You can find that out there, that's very good. But even IELTS and TOEFL and other exams with questions, it's all good training, all keeps you focused. Um, if you're lucky enough to be in the workplace, then get all those, the workplace guidelines from where you work. 
if it's an English speaking workplace, that's a great thing. And finally, read with a purpose, everyone. Don't just read, it's not really reading for pleasure. You might be reading to build your vocabulary. So keep a, vo a vocabulary list. You might be trying to read and understand complex sentences. Maybe that's your weak area. So get good at that. You might be trying to work, understand how a paragraph is structured to see how a writer builds an argument or point of view. So that's another good skill. So try all those things. Um, on a daily basis and your reading will approve. But if you don't read regularly and you are struggling with reading, then you will have difficulty improving. It's got to be done regularly. Okay, that's reading. Any final questions about reading? Type in AG if all good. Type in AG if all good. All right, I think we must be all good. We're now going to move on to um, listening, listening part B. Getting lots of AGs, thank you guys. So listening part B, again, it's workplace communication. Team briefings uh, with one speaker, so there may only be one speaker, or it could be a handover, two health professionals talking to one another about a patient, or it could be a health professional talking to a patient. If it is a health professional talking to a patient, um, then perhaps it will be more, you may have to focus on what the health professional is saying, but you may also have to focus on what the patient is saying, depending on your question. Uh, one thing I can tell you in, when there are two people speaking, it will always be a male and a female voice. It will always be that. So that will help you um, distinguish between who's speaking. Depsy says, can you help with reading part C? Well, that's what we did last week, uh, last a, a few, a little while ago, Depsy. Go back through prep hour seven, I think you can check out that video. Um, all right. Um, now we're understanding what skills do you need? Well, understanding the main idea of a communication, same as in part B, reading, understanding the purpose, same as part B, but also identifying some, well, I wouldn't say less important, but you could say less important or a particular detail. So here's our question, everyone, then I'm gonna play the audio. So this is the task you hear part of a hospital management meeting where a concern is being discussed. Now on exam day, you'll have 15 seconds to read it. So we have to read carefully. What is the committee concerned about? Is it poor response to recruitment? Is it recruitment drives? Is it difficulties retaining staff? Or is it C, relatively high absence rates. Okay, let's try. I'm gonna play, pay attention, and then type your answer in when you know what it is. Well, I'll hand over to Jenny, who has a few words to say about staffing. Jenny? Thanks. Now... Oh, go back. Pardon me, let's do that again. Now I'll hand over to Jenny, who has a few words to say about staffing. Jenny? Thanks. Now, if we compare ourselves to other hospitals of the same size in other regions, we're actually recording lower rates of staff turnover. That's just as well, given the challenges filling vacant positions across the sector. Where we do compare unfavorably is in the number of days lost to sick leave. That's making it hard to maintain full cover on the wards, and we all know the costs of that. As a matter of urgency then, HR are looking into the worst affected areas to understand the reasons behind it and to see if there's anything we can do to help and support the staff involved. 
Okay. You think you know the answer, type it in. While I'm waiting for your answers, Jemika says, what accent do they usually provide? Does anyone know what accents you could hear on that tape? There was a particular accent there. Could anyone pick up the accent? A couple of people going for B, a lot of people going for C. So is it is it difficulty retaining staff? A few people went for that. Or is it relatively high staff absence rates? Hello, Denevi, I see you there. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the text. Nearly everyone went for C and a couple of people went for B. Well, the C's have it, everyone. It was, um, A was not given and B, we rule it out because it says we're actually recording lower rates of staff turnover. So staff turnover means when you lose staff, but they don't have that. They're able to retain them. So they're doing quite well there. So it's not B. Uh, but where we do compare unfavorably is the number of days lost to sick leave. So that means relatively high staff absent rates. Now, well done, everyone. A lot of you got that. And notice how it's all about synonyms. Days lost to sick leave high staff absence rates. So the actual answer choices are using formal language, but the text is using a bit more informal spoken English. So you need to be able to code up between informal language in the conversation and formal language in the text. So the correct answer was C. Now, can anyone tell me what accent that was? That's another challenge, listen. Well, I'll hand over to Jenny, who has a few words to say about Steffi. Anyone? Take a guess. Australian, American, Canadian, New Zealand, South African, Scottish, British. Who's good with accents? A few people have gone for Australian. No, I'm Australian. I've got an Australian accent. That's a different accent to me. America, well done, Marie. It's American. That was an American accent. That's what that is. Well, I'll hand over to Jenny, who has a few words to say about step. You know, here is a few words. It's a bit American. All right. I think the woman might have been Canadian Liji. I think the woman might have been Canadian. Anyway, you're not being tested on the accents. So you don't have to worry. Um, it will be clear like that. That was very clear. So what you listen to will be quite clear on exam day. All right. So not too hard. People did well. Let's try another one. You hear a GP and his practice nurse discussing a vacation program. Oh, I think that's an error in the question, everyone. I think that's a vaccination program. Let's just edit that. It should be vaccination program. All right, let's, let's listen, everyone. Just ignore that. So we're looking for, they agree that the practice should make sure that patients are aware of it, organize it more effectively than in the past, or prepare to cope with an increasing demand for it. One of those ones. Let's listen. It's coming up to that time of year when we have to start preparing for the flu vaccination program. Yes, we usually do it at the start of next month, don't we? That's right. If you remember last year, we hired a local hall and did as many people as we could in one afternoon. Yes, I just started working here then. It was a hectic couple of hours, but it worked pretty well, don't you think? Sure, but there's been so much publicity recently about how sensible it is to get the jab that I suspect we'll have a lot more people coming along this year. 
So it would be better to think about taking on an agency nurse, perhaps, to lend an extra hand. Okay. Let's run that by the practice manager. And she might have some other suggestions, too. Okay, that was a lot faster that time. Now, someone asked, Butchik says, can we repeat one more time the audio? No, one chance only um, listening. Funny name there, Butchik. Uh, one chance only. Everyone, some, now here we've got Bs. Some people have said Cs. Kira says horrible accent. What accent was it? Getting Bs and Cs. Um, it's not A, I agree. So it's either B or C. So Bs are comparative, everyone, more effectively than in the past. That means obviously there was an issue in the past, whereas C prepared a coke with an increasing demand. Let's have a look. So here's the conversation, everyone. It's not A, it's not B, it's C. And it was really fast, I know. He says, if you look at the blue, because last year it worked pretty well, so that rules out B, organise it more effectively. No, because he said, but it worked pretty well, don't you think? And the male said, sure. So that rules out B. This time, have a read again and follow the text, everyone. It's coming up to that time of year when we have to start preparing for the flu vaccination programme. Yes, we usually do it at the start of next month, don't we? That's right. If you remember last year, we hired a local hall and did as many people as we could in one afternoon. Yes, I just started working here then. It was a hectic couple of hours, but it worked pretty well, don't you think? Sure, but there's been so much publicity recently about how sensible it is to get the jab that I suspect we'll have a lot more people coming along this year. So it'd be better to think about taking on an agency nurse, perhaps, to lend an extra hand. OK, let's run that by the practice manager. And she might have some other suggestions, too. All right, pretty fast, wasn't it? What accent, everyone? Can you pick the accent? Um, this one's a bit hard. You've really got to pick. Um, you have to read, everyone, the strategy for these is to keep your eyes on the answer choices while you listen. So you're multitasking here, everyone. You're reading through the choices. And as you go, you've got to try to rule out. So this is all about reading and listening at the same time. Everyone's telling me it's British. I agree, it's British. Sounds to me, I'm not British, but it sounds to me like it's from the north. Maybe it's a Yorkshire accent or somewhere up in the northern regions. Um, not a, definitely not American, that one. So um, you can tell by the intonation and the way they certain vowels um, are sounded. All right, let's do one more, everyone. Last one. You hear two hospital nurses discussing the assessment of a patient on their ward. Okay, two nurses. So it's going to be male and female. What's the problem? So we've got to listen for a problem. Has the patient's document been sent to the wrong place? Nobody has taken responsibility for assessing the patient or the duty doctor was unable to locate the patient. Okay, A and C are kind of opposites. A says the documentation's been lost. C says the duty doctor can't locate the patient. So is it the documentation or the patient? Or is it B, nobody's taken responsibility? Let's find out. The bed manager just rang. He wants us to clear three spaces in the ward today. Oh, it's never ending. Mm. Let's see what we can do. There's no one ready to be discharged, but we could try chasing referrals from Mr. Davison to the community hospital for rehab. Where are his notes? Yes, but has he had his assessment yet? 
they were all away at that conference yesterday and the day before. I think he'll have slipped through the net. But Dr. Ramat's already got him medically stable and signed off, so he should be the next one to move on. Well, I get him there as quickly as possible before they give the place to somebody else. I'll phone them straight away. That's it, everyone. Tricky. Aziz says, how can I receive transcripts of listening? Uh, well, um, this I'm using this task from the OET Centre book and they provide transcripts. Um, and certainly at OET Online and all our courses, our listening material provides transcripts. So yes, you should be able to get transcripts for your tasks. Now, a lot of people are going for B and we're getting some A's at this stage. No C's, B's and A's. The patient's document was sent to the wrong place or nobody's taken responsibility. Yeah, they're both possible. Let's have a look. This time, let's read it before I give you the answer. See if you can figure it out by reading it. If... The bed manager just rang. He wants us to clear three spaces in the ward today. Oh, it's never ending. Mm. Let's see what we can do. There's no one ready to be discharged, but we could try chasing referrals from Mr. Davison to the community hospital for rehab. Where are his notes? Yes, but has he had his assessment yet? They were all away at that conference yesterday and the day before. I think he'll have slipped through the net. But Dr. Armat's already got him medically stable and signed off, so he should be the next one to move on. Well, I get him there as quickly as possible before they give the place to somebody else. I'll phone them straight away. All right. So the answer is B. And has he had his assessment yet? It's in the middle of the transcript. And they said they were all away. All the hospital staff were away. So well done if you chose B. It's not about the documentation being sent to the wrong place. Uh, it doesn't mention that. It just says, has he had his assessment yet? And appears not. By saying they were all the way, that means applied no, implies no. And I think he'll have slipped through the net. Means he was missed. The assessment was missed, not the documentation. All right. So that's listing, everyone. And if we have a look at that, if you want to improve your listing, there's so much audio out there, everyone. But a lot of people have been talking about accents. So if you want to practice different accents, here's three good websites, everyone. Um, tell me which of these you've seen. 24 Hours in Emergency. Has anyone seen that program? Excellent program. Real life, dramatic, well acted. It's real. Um, that's a British one. So you want to get used to your British accent. Watch 24 Hours in Emergency. Uh, US Accents. Watch TED Talks and particularly um, look for those 20 minute lectures on medicine. They can be absolutely excellent. Good thing about TED Talks, you can find transcripts, everyone. You can go in and locate the medical talks and then find the transcripts. And that's very powerful. Um, and then if you want an Australian one, there's a great Australian program called Catalyst. And it has a lot of science, including medical stories, and they provide transcripts. I know a lot of people who have passed or improved their reading purely by building their um, listening skills by reading and um, reading the transcripts and listening at the same time. Because in this exam, it's not just listening, is it? You've got to read and make decisions. So the more you practice that, the better you will get. Okay. Not sure what Jamaica means. King, is that a program, Jamaica? Uh, those in the audience, if you have your, any favorite medical programs that you like, um, type them in. Type them in. Share them with others. All right, so today we have covered 
the communication aspects of um, the OET exam. The little short things, the little part B sections with six questions each. Um, not as difficult as the part C's overall. So really take this opportunity to get really good in those subtests can have a big impact on your overall score. So don't neglect the workplace communication, build your skills and um, it will help you achieve a positive result. All right, King's Cross on BBC4. Thank you, Jamaka and Palmer. Uh, Muhammad mentions All in the Mind. Yes, I know All in the Mind, a great um, program um, on ABC radio here in Australia. Um, there's a plethora of excellent material out there. Ooh, Jot China says, could you please do one class on writing introduction? That's a great question, Jot China. Um, certainly. Um, uh, does anyone else, that, that's something, and I'll make a note of that. Introductions. We could do something, because I agree with you. The introductions are one of the hardest parts um, of the exam to actually study. So absolutely. Uja says, please discuss about reading part C. Yep, I'll put that on the list. We might have to do another part C, I agree. Yeah, part C can be very challenging. A lot of analysis, a lot of skill there, a lot of, you know, building your vocabulary, all these very important. Okay. Now, let me ask, tell me about your study methods, those people in the audience. What's your preferred method of study? Do you study solo um, or do you join um, preparation course providers? Which option do you choose? Mm -hmm. So Pritz just started OET practice, so at the beginning stage. You're welcome, Mohammed. All right, so yeah, look, we run these sessions for free every month. Um, George says how to improve organization. Yes, well, wow, that's, a, that's a topic that we cover in all our courses at OET Online. It's a big focus. Um, Aziz says, I want to know what kind of reading stuff should I read to improve? That's what I just showed you before, if you remember. Aziza, just go back and watch this video. We said Medscape, um, old reading uh, material is always good, but just being a regular reader um, with medical articles, workplace texts like workplace communication, all good. Muhammad says courses are very useful. Pleased to hear that as a teacher. So that's what Butchik says as well. And Noreen, you're welcome, Katniss. Um, when's the next class? So I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. I'll just get to that in a sec. Before I do that, I'll just go through, just finish off this slide. So just tell you a couple of things, everyone. So look, we get the January 11 exam results came out. And we get a lot of positive feedback from our students every month. So if you want an organized program, definitely come along and study with us. We can help you. Here's Joshua from Cameroon. Um, he got all those scores above 350. So that's what you want to see. And um, interesting what he said. He said he went through the online material several times during the exam, um, uh, the online during several times and during the exam, he respected the strategies and passed. So that's must be a pretty smart guy, respected the strategies. So on exam day, sometimes people might just forget about those strategies, but that's not good. You need to be onto it and staying focused to your method. It's a lot about the method that you've approached. And now his heart is filled with stupendous joy. Wonderful. And another one, and this one only just came through. 
Um, this is Rashmi, a nurse here in Australia. And um, she got four scores above 350. And she wrote, this deep, I'm delighted to inform you that I passed the OET test on my first attempt. Wow, gotta be good if you get through on your first attempt. But also, uh, Rashmi worked very hard. She learned a lot about her writing and it improved. Um, she enjoyed the support, the advice of positivity and encouragement. The OET online, we know how important being positive and encouraging is. And she's recommending anyone who's struggling to pass this test. So follows Rashmi's, Rashmi's advice and study with us, I would say will help you. Um, and that brings us to the last slide. We just went back to the beginning. Just going through that again very quickly. So I wanted to make an update, everyone. So for OET Online, we've updated all our courses and we've got some great new course options. And we've done that. We do regular surveys to find out the needs of our students and what they want. And we know it's a challenge to pass this exam. So now we offer more content, more lectures and more values and unlimited live virtual classes. Let's take a look, everyone, at what we offer here. For those people who aren't already on a course with us. So this is our website, everyone. If you haven't been to this page, this is OET online. And um, we have courses for all professions, nurses, doctors, but every single profession that's tested by OET. And we are endorsed by the OET Centre uh, for all those allied professions as well. Now, in terms of our all skill courses, uh, you can see here, we've got a good deal going on at the moment, but these are our courses, everyone. Let's take a look. We've got our ultimate course. It's 5.99 Australian, not US, that's Australian dollars. Uh, if you have a look at a course like the ultimate, you get unlimited live classes. What does that, and recorded video. So you never miss a class. So that works really well. And that's a 12 month access period. So you've just got it for 12 months. If you don't get through first time, if it takes you a while, if you're juggling work, family and study, that's a great course. Um, and then uh, depending on the course, the duration, the price changes and also the content. So we've got our platinum at 429 and that has a nine month access also with that unlimited live classes. And then we have our standard. Standard's a great value course, everyone. Someone said, I'm planning in a couple of months, what's the fee? Palmer, go for your standard maybe. It's only 279, you get the unlimited live classes for six months. So you can um, just study at your own pace and you're gonna get two corrections, two private classes, your, your four reading and listening sets and all the huge range of practice material on our website. Very well organized, easy to access. Now, I think if you need a shorter course, if you just want to um, just study within about, well, we give three month access. If budget is a concern, go for Turbo. 30 hours of live classes. We're going to correct one of your writing, let you know where you're at. We're going to include a private speaking class, all your reading, listening material. And again, that's three months duration. Noreen saying these courses are really helpful. Thank you, Noreen. And a brand new course, everyone, our economy, that's self-study. Go solo, just $99, 30 hours of lectures, all up to date. Um, plus all your material. So really, really good. So that's our new options. Uh, someone asked about writing. Well, if we go to our writing courses, everyone, you don't have to do all skills. If you only need help with a single skill, then go for a single skills course. Um, we've reduced our prices here too, everyone. So this is the one I, if you're having trouble with writing, 
go for virtual writing class plus online grammar review. That's an amazing course because that will have writing lectures for your profession. So writing lectures for doctors, writing lectures for nurses or writing lectures for the allied professions. So specific to your profession um, and always updated. And not only do you get those writing lectures, which help with some people asked before about organization, how to write an introduction, all that sort of important stuff. That's what we do in those classes. How to write your body paragraphs, how to omit non-relevant information, how to summarize all of those skills, all in line with the OET writing criteria. But that's only half the battle. You need good grammar. So we run weekly grammar classes and that's sentence structure, verb, tense, prepositions, and articles, all those challenging things when you're trying to write at a, you know, at a high level. Just $250, great value. That's Australian dollars, remember? And that includes your five writing correction by an expert teacher. When I say expert teacher, someone who understands the criteria. There's a lot of people out there offering cheap corrections and they don't understand the criteria and it can cause you more harm than good. So watch out for that. Um, good if you can get, if you study with us, you will get marked by um, professional teachers and examiners um, to ensure you're on the track. Um, you, we also have virtual writing class at 150. That's also unlimited live virtual classes, but not the grammar. And then if you just want correction, look, just $75. And that's all that's going to get you three personalized writing correction to just $25 per correction. And your teacher will give you detailed feedback and the grade and, and everything you need. And all the, every little aspect of your writing will be analyzed and you'll receive detailed feedback, serious feedback, which you print out and study. And then you improve step by step. So if you just want correction, that's a good one. And just want self-study, just material, just $25 Australian. And we've got a great range of material to support you. Sample tasks, model letters, um, worksheets, quizzes, everything you need. Now, the same applies to reading and listening. We offer reading only courses and we offer speaking only and listening only. And my suggestion for that, everyone, is just visit the website. Uh, and we got classes starting next week, everyone. So the next round of classes will actually start. And you can see here on the schedule. The next round of classes will actually start on, wait for it. It will actually start on February 10. So just in three days time. So good luck to everybody. Um, Good luck to everybody taking the exam on Feb 8, but if you've got a longer term plan, uh, come in and watch, um, come and join our Feb 10 classes. Plenty of time to enroll. And then there's lots of exams in 2020 for the OET Center. Our classes are ongoing, as we said before, unlimited live classes. So that means you can attend, once you enroll, you can attend all these live classes for your course duration, continually updating our content um, to make sure you're well prepared. Mohammed says, Grammar Clinic, a nice idea. Can you give us a hint about it? Well, let's take a look, everyone. Let's take a look. So when we go into one of our courses, I'll just show you, I'll give you a sneak preview inside. Uh, just come along and have a look. Let's have a look. These are the different course option. There it is, Grammar and Vocabulary Clinic. So look, this is our Grammar and Vocabulary Clinic. You can see there are some students studying on there now. We're looking inside here now. And you might decide, okay, I want to study, I'm having difficulty with active and passive verbs. So there's your explanation, everyone. This is clearly presented. You can see the rules. You can see active and passive sentences. You can see the common errors, incorrect, correct, all that details there. So really, really helpful. You can print out these pages or study online. And uh, 
You can also um, do a quiz. So when you, um, you can actually take the quiz. This is a quiz for prepositions to test your knowledge that you've studied. So it works really well. And the other thing I'll show you, if you go to your dashboard, once you've enrolled, you can see all, you'll see a calendar and all the classes scheduled for the next month will appear on your calendar. So this is the classes coming up in February. You can see them all listed here and it comes up on your calendar and you'll be able to attend the live class. And the videos of those classes are available for viewing. So it's all there for you. If you miss a live class or you want to watch it again, just watch the video afterward. There's a bunch of our students happily working hard. So you'll never feel alone. You'll always feel supported. All right, so that's just a little bit about what we do. But what I suggest you do, if you're unsure whether it's for you, come and check out our free trial course. It's free. So you can come to this page, um, check out what we've got there. And then if you like what's on offer, sign up. We'll help you pass. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Keo says as, um, a question. She requires further evaluation in the full memory assessment. That's a good sentence, Keo. Um, all right, any questions? Thank you for coming today, everyone. This is our first dual feed. We did a live feed online. We did uh, YouTube and Facebook. So I can see many of you are on Facebook, but also quite a few YouTubers. So glad you could join us. Noreen saying nice comments. Thank you, Noreen. She said it's a good effort as a premier course. Yes, we do our best. Noreen, we're here to help you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful exam. Keep in touch. Check the website for those great value courses, and we'll make sure you get through on your next attempt. Bye for now.